Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Makai's World and Costa Custis Adventures. And on this episode, we're checking out the Jaguar Rescue Centers, one of the premier destinations in Puerto Viejo. So today we have with us Sarah Kennedy, and she has worked at the Jaguar Rescue Center for a long time, and she is an... What do you do? Uh, so I came here seven years ago to work with Sloths, and I basically never left. But yeah, I've been at the Rescue Center for three years previously at the Sloth Sanctuary, but yeah, I'm Team Sloth, basically. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. Cool. So she's going to know a lot about what we saw uh, when we were there the other day. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into the video, and she's going to tell us a little, about, little bit about what we're seeing and let us know what the Jaguar Center is all about. All right, so here we go. Hey, welcome to Costa Cousins, and today we're gonna go to the rescue center. We're in Costa Rica right now, and I'm born here, us too, and I'm back here, because we're gonna go to a or something. So, anyways, Hi. Now, are there actually fish in there? Or? There wasn't, there's no fish, but there are tadpoles in there a lot. And there's a lot of um, tree frogs, the red eye lay their eggs on the leaves and then they drop into the water and become tadpoles, become frogs. So yeah, normally it's filled with a lot of different tadpoles, but I think they did have fish in there at one point, but not right now, no. And yeah, the little red eyed tree frogs, you get like teeny tiny ones that are like less than an inch. And they're super cute. The center has started a shock-free zone because most of our animals actually come because of electrocutions. Mm -hmm. So it's around 50% of the mammals that live in trees in Costa Rica get killed on the power lines every year. But 50% of all of those electrocutions are actually sloths. Mm. So sloths are the biggest intake in the rescue center, every rescue center in Costa Rica, in fact. The problem is, so for anyone that hasn't been living in Costa Rica, our power lines are above ground and they're a mess is a polite mm -hmm. way to put it. Mm -hmm. But the insulation the power company uses, you say it's really cheap. So with this kind of climate, the humidity, the weather, it wears away that at that insulation, causes mm -hmm. bare patches. We've obviously been chopping down the animals' trees so that we can build houses and roads. Mm -hmm. So they have to use the power lines. Imagine a line, it looks like a vine to mm -hmm. an animal, right? Mm -hmm. And they touch those bare patches and they get shocked or electrocuted. So the center, to try and negate this, they are raising money via a GoFundMe to try and re, re all of the power lines and the transformers as well. And the idea is to do the whole country. Hmm. They've done so far 27 lines and transformers, um, but the idea is they were gonna keep it rolling. And so yeah, it's called the Shock Free Zone. You guys can check it out online uh, on GoFundMe if you want to. It's really cool. So Dada is a brown-footed booby, which is the cousin of the Galapagos, the, the blue-footed. Okay. So the ones with like the bright blue beak and the bright blue feet. So she's called the common version as well, which I think is a bit mean, personally. <laughs> but she's very young, so we're not sure exactly what happened to her wing, but it's completely ruined, her left wing, so she'll actually never fly. She's a seabird that migrates, so obviously she can't be released, but so she lives in the center. Free roaming, goes literally wherever she wants to go. She is the sassiest bird on earth as well. <laughs> um, I think all of the animals that end up staying in the rescue center, they get these like amazing ego complexes and they're like, I'm amazing, look at me. <laughs> and they're feisty as anything, particularly the female animals. Hmm. And she is a female. Um, but she is kind of the queen of the center now. But yeah, she's a, a beautiful bird and she's got a lot of character. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I tried guys. Oh, yeah. That's more than that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another carrot. And it's over. <laughs> So 
So um, we get quite a few monkeys um, in the center. There's actually four species in Costa Rica, but only three that you can see in the Caribbean. So we have the extremely naughty white-faced capuchins. Uh, <laughs> we have the spider monkeys, which are the kind of golden colored, and then the howler monkeys, which mm -hmm. if you haven't seen them, you've heard them. Mm -hmm. They're actually the loudest land mammal in the whole world. So they're louder than lions. Lions could technically be louder, but the air's so dry that their roar doesn't get as far. Howler monkeys, it's three miles. You can hear them away. They're also the noises for the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. And the males are the loudest, particularly the males with the smallest balls. <laughs> they're basically shouting to each other. So that's how they communicate in the mornings to find each other. So unfortunately, it is at 5 a.m. or earlier. Mm -hmm. Loudest lamb mammal at 5 a.m. That's a stupid idea right there, <laughs> isn't it? Um, but that's what they're, they're, they're basically saying. Good morning, where are you? Probably a lot less British than that, I have to say. <laughs> Probably speaking in Spanish, I guess. But yeah, that's that's what they're doing. Now, the women working with monkeys, <laughs> they lose about 5% of their hair. Every single day. Oh my gosh. Because they hang by the hair. Uh, the spider monkeys, uh, they're the biggest species, uh, considered the most intelligent because they can speak a language, whereas other monkeys communicate with pitch and facial expression. But in my opinion, the white-faced capuchins are smarter. White-faced capuchins, they're the naughtiest animal on earth, in my opinion. They're named after the monks of the same name because of the black hoods and their white faces. Hmm. Uh, they're super smart. They're one of the very few species of monkey, like orangutans, that can use tools to hunt with. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa. Did you see that? <laughs> one just made one go. They also make their own insect repellent. So they mix together citrus leaves, monkey pee, crushed millipede, rub it together, rub it on their fur, and it protects them from fleas, mosquitoes, and funguses. And they're huge thieves. And, and they're about to be released next year in Tortuguera National Park as a group. All right. So such great information about the monkeys, about the shock free zone, all those different things. Thank you very much to Sarah Kennedy for staying with us and giving us that information. Uh, tune in next week and we're going to talk about the sloths, her favorite, and some other things going on with the rescue center. So stay tuned, come back next week, to check it out. And like always for now, like always for now, we are recording on a GoPro Hero 7 Black and uh, that's what we use to do all of our recording at this point. And when we level up, we'll let you know, but we'll put a link to the description in the bottom about this camera and all of our other equipment. So stay tuned. We will talk to you soon. See you later from Makai's World and Coast of Cousins Adventures. And we'll leave you with some toucans eating water apples in the tree. Pura vida and peace. <laughs>